Welcome to Schwab Coaching. I'm Connie Hill and happy you join me here today. We've been excited to roll out Thinkorswim uh, platform so that you can learn to trade on it. And we're doing some preparatory classes so you can start working with Thinkorswim. Now, if you are at a point that you don't even know how to do a trade, uh, then this is going to be the perfect class for you because that is really what our focus is going to be on is showing you basically the trade page and how that works for both stock and option trades. Let's go through some disclosures here real quick, and then we will get down to the fun stuff. Uh, what we talked about today is intended for educational and informational purposes only. It shouldn't be considered a recommendation. More than anything, this isn't a strategy session. It is a platform demo uh, demonstration. Uh, options, which we'll talk about today, carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. We'll talk about some technical analysis, yeah, so briefly, but uh, there are other approaches that may uh, be uh, valid here as well, like fundamental analysis. Investing involves risk, including the risk of loss of principal. Past performance is no guarantee of future results or success. We will be using real ticker symbols here today in order to be able to do the de demonstration, but just keep in mind they are to help us out with the functionality. Our agenda, we're gonna get deeper into exploring the Thinkorswim platform navigation. We're going to discuss about uh, more specifically today, trading and investing tools and resources and just using the tools so that you can do your everyday trading, investing and so forth. All right. Uh, so first of all, this is kind of a series that we're going through today. We are on number three, the trade tab, as I mentioned. And uh, First of all, one thing I want to repeat at the beginning of every class is where do you get Thinkorswim? I know we have new folks joining us all the time. They need to know where to be able to download it. Uh, you can go to thinkorswim.com is one place. Probably somewhere you're more familiar with is going to the Charles Schwab uh, website. So I'm going to show you from there because I think that's going to be a little bit more convenient for many of you. One thing to note, you do not need to create a new login and password. You're going to be able to use whatever your account login is and password. You're just going to use them in this platform. Think of it as another way to trade and where your database of your information resides. Okay, so you're just going to choose a different platform. Now, I'm going to take you over here to uh, the Charles Schwab site and just kind of show you where I am here. Here is the trade tab, and you're gonna select under trading platforms. That's what we're looking at right here. Then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna scroll down a little bit. It's gonna give you some information. You do have to specifically enable your account to use Thinkorswim. You can use paper money, which I'm gonna show you as well. You can use that without enabling Thinkorswim first. Uh, and you probably would wanna do that to practice because once you enable it, then you will not be able to see your SSE. You'll still be able to, I should I said that wrong. You'll be able to see it, but you won't be able to do trades on Street Smart Edge, okay? Once you've enabled Thinkorswim. Now, just to get it, your download going, you're gonna see here, there's a, a Think or Swim desktop. You just select on this blue file. Our, our button is going to download the file to your machine. It's going to walk you through the installation. You've probably done lots of these over time and are familiar with the prompts that come up and you just answer the questions and it does all the work for you. Be aware there is Thinkorswim Web and Thinkorswim Mobile as well. Although today the most uh, powerful and the one that has the most features is going to be this desktop version and that's what we're going to start with. Now, uh, I do want to start here by answering a couple of questions I didn't get to last week, if you happen to be here last week. And so let's jump over here to Thinkorswim. I'm going to just read you what some of those questions were. They came in kind of at the very end. I didn't get to them. Uh, one said, I've never traded options. Can one paper trade options? Yes. And I'm going to show you that. In fact, let me show you right now because we're talking about paper trading. Uh, this little uh, kind of graphic here lets you know what account you're logging into. So this is where I said you'd use your own username and password, put them in here. And then down here at the bottom, there's a couple of fields to pay attention to. 
One says live trading, one says paper money. And so to get used to things, to know how to do the types of trading that you like to do and investing, to see your positions and so forth, select on the paper money and it'll enable that database. And I want you to know it is a separate database. You're not gonna see your current positions in there. It's just gonna be vanilla with zero information in there. But that's a good place for you to start to practice. You'll have market data, uh, but just not your own funds. You're gonna be using paper money. Okay, $100,000 in that paper money account. So just wanted to point that out to you so you know what to do with the process is. Download it, select on the icon, that splash icon to launch this screen. Yours, yours will actually be a blue splash there. Uh, mine uh, that I'm showing you with is a, is a green splash. All right, uh, so other questions here. Uh, somebody wanted to know if you could do conditional orders on Thinkorswim. I'm gonna show you a lot of conditional orders today. The answer is yes. Um, uh, somebody asked, is there a screen help showing how to change colors in the application from the default colors? Uh, I touched on this just briefly, and I actually have a little bit better answer for you. I touched on that in the previous class. What you can do in the upper right-hand corner, just follow my mouse, there's a setup button. You'll select on that select on application settings and then a way that you can choose uh, a couple of things here come down to look and feel look and feel will show you kind of what some of the default uh, choices are here i've chosen a light color scheme however something that i did notice is an sse light that's for you guys street smart edge okay i haven't seen these colors before which I thought was interesting. So it kind of shows you what the colors will look like. I'm gonna apply it so you just can kind of see it. If that looks like something you're familiar with, maybe the colors you're used to, that might be a nice option for you uh, to be able to use that. For today, I'm just gonna change it back to what I had in just the regular light. Uh, don't choose the Chinese settings that will not show things properly for American accounts. All right, so we're back here. All right, let's get going on some uh, basic trades. I'm gonna come over here to the trade tab. I know last week I had populated, last couple of weeks I had already populated some orders in here because we weren't to the trade tab yet. So I'm gonna select on this trade tab. And the areas that you're probably familiar with, the type of data you're gonna see here. You know, the ask price, uh, or the last price that went through, you're gonna see the bid price, the ask price. Uh, ask is what you, the market wants you to pay when you buy something, right? The bid is what you receive when you're ready to sell something. And so you're gonna notice here, I don't see any buy or sell buttons here, Connie. And you're right, you don't. What you do instead, you just click, if you're ready to buy something, you're just gonna click on the ask price. I'm gonna do a different ticker symbol in here because we're gonna use it for a few things. All right, I'm just gonna select on the ask button and down at the bottom, it populates an order. You can see it has a green background. So when we're buying things, it's green. When we're selling things or creating credit spreads, you're gonna see kind of a pinkish background. Uh, it'll be bright red if you're choosing the black background so you can distinguish be between the colors. You'll see, uh, let me maybe collapse my gadget side for a minute. You'll see it just defaults to a buy and it defaults to 100 shares. You can change that default if you want, okay? Uh, we see the ticker symbol VRT, it's a stock. And then the price here floods in and it'll keep updating as long as you have this little lock. It shows up in an unlocked position. When it's unlocked, it'll sit there and feed the current data through it so that this price changes as the price is changing. It doesn't just stay where it was when you clicked on it, okay? We see that it's a limit order, which is a default. If you wanted it to be a market order, simply click here, do a market order. And then, of course, it just fills you at the next available price. You're not guaranteed a particular price. Uh, the typical, if you just want your order to be good for today, like you think it's going to get filled right away, if it needs to meet some conditions, what some folks will do is they'll change this from a day order to GTC, 
GTC stands for good till canceled. It's going to last about six months. Okay. Hopefully by then things will have changed. You will have purchased whatever it is that you're looking to get into or traded, whatever it is. I do want to point out these other fields because I know the questions are going to come up. Can I trade an extended hours trading? Can I make my order that I submit be good for that? Yes. And there's two different ones to be aware of. So just putting it on EXT will be the extended hours. Um, which means after market and before market, but maybe you want it to be good till canceled as well as be in the extended hours, then you would choose this GTC underscore EXT. All right, I think we've got a couple of questions coming in here that I'm gonna uh, touch on. Let's make sure. Um, Ooh, we've got a lot of questions. All right, let me let me just kind of start at the beginning here with Ken's question. Um, I did a single account. Uh, I did transfer a single account over to Thinkorswim, and I well, when I tried to buy an option, the account that the account has to see cash to cover. I will keep cash in this da 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 da, da and I will sell switch to or S W V X X to cover. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, is it, I might be missing your question in there, Ken. Um, I'm just hearing you explain the situation, but I'm not really seeing the question. So would you reword that for me and send that back in? I'll look for it. Oh, okay. In other words, TOS will not allow delayed covering of purchase like on SSE. Okay. Um, when you say delayed, do you mean like an after hours or are you looking for a timestamp? If you're looking for a timestamp, I'm gonna show you a timestamp. Okay, when we used to get into some of our conditional orders. Oh, technical boards are the, the, they are maybe working on that particular thing. Okay, uh, no problem. They, let's see, Jim says, I downloaded last week and I show nothing for my account. Um, Jim, are you in the live or are you in the paper version? Okay. And remember, there's two steps. One is, is you have to enable your account to be switched over. And once it's enabled, you can trade on Thinkorswim. You will not be able to trade on SSE anymore. Okay. So that's why it might be helpful to go into the paper side. And just use your account information, your login and password to practice there with dummy data. Now we're gonna, your account is gonna start out with some funny money, right? Some play money to practice with. And you're gonna see up here, now somebody's played around with this particular one and put quite a bit of money in it, which is great. Uh, we've got over 9 million in here, but typically you're gonna find it's gonna be about $100,000, okay? Is what you will see. Some of you may also have like a secondary account in there. And it usually is for an IRA. And so it's a little bit more restrictive in what you can trade in it. So most people just kind of say, well, I want to practice trading everything. So they'll just use this main account. Um, all right. Um, I have both a trade window and a chart side by side. I like to see the chart when I trade. Great. In fact, you can, we'll get into a whole session on gadgets, but you can bring up a quick chart here. I just bring up ticker symbol A. Yeah, you can have a chart over here on the side while you have something else here in your main screen, like the trade tab. Now let's get into a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to guess that some of you do more sophisticated trading and want maybe to learn a little bit more. So I just did the ask button here, right? If I wanted to buy the stock, if you want to, if you want to short the stock, click over here on the bid price. Notice how everything changed down here to a sell and a minus quantity and a pink background alerting you that, hey, you're selling, not buying, or you're in this case for the stock, you're shorting. We'll go back to the ask. Uh, now, suppose you want to put some conditions on this. For example, you want to put a target or a stop. Thinkorswim lets you do this real easy. Now I'm gonna do a right mouse click here, and then you can just come down to buy custom, and then you'll have some choices. If you wanted to put on a stop loss with your order, 
you could just pick with stop. You're gonna notice, all right, our green order's on the top and our this pink order, which is the exit order, is on the, ba the bottom. Some of them take two rows to configure. So don't let that throw you off, okay? Uh, and you can also do, I'm gonna come back here, right mouse click again, we could do an OCL bracket order, which means one cancels other. So if it goes up and hits your target first, that's the one that executes and it cancels your stop. If it comes down and hits your stop, then that's the order that gets accepted. It quickly cancels your limit order because you don't want an order sitting out there if you don't own it anymore. Now, of course, you're going to be able to put in your own values here. Okay, let's suppose a target here is um, 48. And let's suppose maybe a stop price that you'd feel comfortable getting out. Is, I'm just using some basic numbers here, okay, would be 39. All right. On this stop, remember this MKT stands for market, which means at the trigger price of 39, it triggers a market order, but we're not guaranteed to be filled at 39. OK, uh, on this where we have this conditional, you know, one cancels other, make sure you put both of these as GTCs. One can't be day. Uh, they have to be the same time frame on each of these. If you mess up, a little error is going to come in here and let you know about it and say, hey, you can't do that. All right. So that's just kind of some basics with just working with stock. Now, somebody had asked, you know, if they could do a conditional order. So I'm just going to delete that one. We'll still use uh, Vertiv here. And I'm going to just kind of show you what the chart looks like real quickly. We'll spend a whole day on charts. What if you were somebody and you said, you know, I like that uh, maybe we're seeing a breakout here. I'm just going to draw a line in here real quick. I like this little breakout, but I don't know if it's going to keep going. I want to make sure it gets to a certain price and I don't want to get filled till it gets to that price. OK, let's say the price is a penny higher than the high price of 4272. OK, that's going to be our price that we're going to use here. So as we come back to the trade tab, I am going to select on the the ask price, but then we're going to change this order down here. All right. Uh, I told you the value we needed to look for was I forgot already 4273. So I'm going to change this. To a stop. And I'm going to change the price to 42.73. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, a stop is to get out. Why would you use a stop on an entry? And this is actually called a buy stop order, which means do not fill me unless the price of the stock gets to 42.73 or higher. Then trigger a market order. Hopefully, we get you know placed close to that price. If the stock gaps up. All right, then it might be a little bit higher of a price on this market order. And you probably would put this good till canceled, okay? Because you don't know if or when it's gonna actually get to that point. Might not be today, okay? It might be another day. So that is one way to do a conditional order. I'm gonna show you some other conditional orders as we get into options here in just a moment. Uh, all right, next section we're going to go into, we're going to talk about some option trades. Uh, let me look real quick at the questions. Um, uh, somebody wants, uh, you have, you're having trouble tracking my mouse. I don't know why. It's big and green. Okay, I've made it the biggest it can be. I've made it kind of fluorescent green. So I'll, I'll uh, maybe try to move it a little bit before I click on something. Maybe that might help you. Um, somebody wants to know, how can I see all my positions with the gains and the losses? That's going to be on the monitor tab. That's where we spent time last week. So we're not going to be doing that again today. Um, but just know if you go to your monitor tab, you're going to see your positions, your P&L open, your profit, P&L today. Just, well, how much of that is profit and loss is due to today, tomorrow morning? Day starts out over, but these numbers are continually updated all, all day long. Now, I do want to spend some time uh, trading options here. Now, uh, when you come in here and you come to your option chain, I'm just going to open up, say, the November options. Initially, you're just going to see four strike prices. Uh, probably most of the stocks you work with, we're going to need more than four strike prices showing. So you can put whatever number here. You can pick it off the list. You can type in your own. I had typed in 15. Okay. 
And by default, the columns that we see, you're always going to see the bid and the ask, right? We've got the puts on the right, the calls on the left, always bid and ask price right here. But then up here on this layout, the two columns they show you are last X. Last is the last price. X is just the exchange that it came from. Sometimes it might be a different letter there. Uh, and net change, just what the price has changed today. There could be other things that you like to see in order to help you with your trades. So for example, maybe you like to see, well, what's the volume and open interest going on today? Uh, you want to trade with contracts or liquid, right? So here um, is the open interest. That's what the balance was uh, this, well, this morning. And then here is the activity for today. And then of course, it, at night, it's going to combine whatever is left of, this, of the balance. It's going to put it in open interest. So you can change your columns that way. Maybe you're somebody who likes to see the Greeks. You look at your delta, gamma, vega, vega, theta, and that helps you make some choices with your trades. Now, you could do what I'm doing. Just go back and forth between the default ones that are there, or you can create your own. Okay. So I'm just going to show you real quickly uh that how to create your own so i'm going to go to customize on the right is everything we've got on there and i'm going to get rid of gamma theta vega and i'm going to add we've got delta i like to see open interest so i'm just going to kind of create my own ultimate what i like to see so we've got open interest and then i'm going to add also uh Something that you may or may not be familiar with seeing called probability. You know, what's the uh, probability that the option would expire in the money and probability out of the money? Sometimes people might put both of those on there. I'm just going to go with the probability out of the money. I'm just going to add that one. And then I add something that we'll get into later, hopefully, called the Theo Price Calculator. It gives you th the theoretical value of an option given different uh, assumptions that you give it. Okay, so I'm going to hit Theo price. I'm going to add it to that side. And you can arrange the order differently if you want. And then you say, okay. Now, if you would like to save it so that you can refer to it and go back and forth with this, as well as the ones that have already been created for you, you need to save it. Okay, so we're going to do a save as here. And I like to just keep what it gives me. If you want to change it and say my favorite, change it to my favorite. I like to, to show what the columns are, okay? So we're gonna hit save so that we can go back to that. Uh, and it's helpful if you know how to do that at the beginning so that you don't feel like you're switching back and forth between all these things and then you can't remember. Okay, I'm gonna check the questions real quickly here. Uh, so Anne's having problems seeing my arrow as well. Would a darker color be better for you guys than this fluorescent green? That would be better. I can change that. I won't do it right now. Um, okay. All right. Looks like we're caught up and up to date. Some of you are re reporting back some information. All right. Let's do this. Uh, let's do an easy option trade first. Okay, uh, let's suppose, I'm gonna bring up a ticker symbol here, uh, Futu Holdings. Now, earlier today, it looked like maybe this was breaking out, okay? And it might be, but it looks like it sure is fading, right? We've got kind of a shooting star type candle. So it looked like it broke the resistance, but it's not staying, and it's even kind of pulling back on some volume. Again, we'll spend a whole session on the charts. So I don't want to get into details here. Just kind of want to paint a scenario. If you owned Futu, you might be interested in selling a call against it. So if you uh, were, were a shareholder, uh, you might come out here and say, you know, I'm going to sell. It has some weeklies. Those could be fairly liquid. Uh, I'm going to just go out here. We're just going to look at a monthly. And we're going to sell, say, the November 1770 strike price. If you already own the shares, let's suppose you have 200 shares. Then you're going to come over here. I'm going to delete this order here first. Then you're going to come over here and just click on what? You're going to click on the bid price because you want to sell it. And we're going to be using this ask column when we start buying some options. So the first one to sell, let's sell this 170 call. 
just click on the bid price. Uh, the default here is 10. You can go into settings in the setup menu and default it to a different quantity. For example, I've defaulted mine to one. Uh, let's just do two contracts here because you have two shares. Of course, you don't have to sell two calls. You can sell one call if you want to, but you need to have at least 100 shares per contract. Uh, and let's suppose uh, saying, hey, the price here is 190. Sometimes people may want to get a little bit better price than what the lowest price is here. And so they might want to use this area, and I'm going to highlight this. They might want to use this area down here to reference. Uh, it's kind of in light gray letters. It may be a little bit hard for you to see it. But this says NAT, and then below it, 190, which means natural price. Over here on the side, it says mid or midpoint price. And so if you were kind of trying to get something in between, you could use this as a reference. You could either click on it on the line. Oops, I've got to get my drawing tool off. All right, so you'd click on it over here and it would change that price or you can just go through the plus and minus buttons, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna be greedy here. Let's just try to get an extra couple of pennies. All right, then you'd hit confirm and send. You'd review it, make sure your order looks right. This order detail, may it's gonna look a little bit different than what you're seeing on Street Smart Edge, okay? Every trading platform has a little bit different look. If you are somebody that is a very experienced trader and you get very comfortable with the platform, you might change this to say auto send with shift click, which means just put it in immediately. Uh, most people are going to want to look at that because you're going to have orders configured different ways, especially if you're new, you're new to the platform, probably not best to turn that on yet. You can tell it which account to go to. For example, if you have several accounts linked together, maybe you have four accounts, okay? You could choose to do it. You could choose what account you want to do it to. Uh, you can also break up the order into different accounts, okay? Just know that that power is there. If you need to make yourself a note for something, go ahead and do it. Uh, check what your max loss is, uh, which in this case could theoretically be infinite, right? And uh, the max profit is 382 because we've got two contracts there. And we're not expecting to make any more than what we sell it for right now. So that, that looks good. And then you can just go ahead and hit send. And before I hit send, I'm going to, um, actually, I'm not going to hit send on this one because I don't own Futu. Uh, I'll show you that next step with something else. But you just hit send, send it on its way. All right, I'm going to delete that. Uh, let's get into single options and spread options. Let's look at a stock. It's been a little bit more on the bearish side lately, DXCM. So we're going to be doing some bearish trades here. You'll notice, yeah, it's definitely been downward trending. Uh, some of you, if you know price patterns, might go, oh, man, this looks like a flag, a flag pull, and it's flagging and it's breaking out. It's breaking down out of it. Some people might like to use that as an entry uh, for a bearish trade. Okay, so we're going to work on some different bearish trades. Now, if you just wanted to buy a put, again, come to the ask price, choose your strike that you're interested in. Say you want the 80 put and you just want to go long. You just click on that ask price and you're done. Uh, say you want to sell a put. Maybe you're, maybe you're more bullish on something, probably not this stock, right? But different stock. If you wanted to sell a put just on its own, just come over to the bid price you know, you might sell something a little out of the money, maybe a 75 strike. And as I select on the bid price there, you can see how the order changes down here. All right. What if you want to put a condition on this? I'm going to go back to the ask price here. I'm going to go back to buying. Uh, I do want to know, you can change stuff down here in the order entry if you want. For example, if you clicked on bid uh, on the ask price, you meant to click on the bid price. You can come over here and just change this uh, little buy. Let me mark where I am. Okay, right there. You can click on it and just change it to sell, and it'll change the order for there for you there. So just know you can change any of these. All right, we are not going to change anything on it necessarily. What if you were interested in getting into this option? 
but you wanted a condition put on it. Like if the price of the stock does X, then I want to get in, okay? Over here on the very far right is a gear. And you're going to notice the gear doesn't show up unless you put your mouse there. So once it shows up, great. A gear means there are some settings behind here and some extra things to fill out. So I'm going to click on the gear and it's going to bring up what we call the order rules page. And this is where you can do a lot of conditional figuring. Like somebody said, hey, can I do some option trades with conditions? Yes. So we might say, okay, what if we wanted the price of the stock? Let's see what its current price is. Uh, 79. What if you didn't want to get into this order until maybe the price of the stock was, say, 79.10? Right now it's at 79.17 or whatever the condition is that you want to put in. Uh, then what we would do, we're going to change this to a market order because that price is going to change, right? When we change our entry price here, it's likely to change. And then we could come down here. We could put in based on what? The stock ticker symbol, not the option symbol. Okay, so the stock ticker symbol. Uh, the default here typically is going to be marked. Thinkorswim likes to use the in-between price, the bid and the ask. If you absolutely wanted the bid or the ask, you could change it. But typically, it'll default to that mark, which is that midpoint. Uh, and then we're going to put in our value here. I told you it was needed to be, uh, oh, it's dropped even for uh, 79.10. Okay, we're going to say 79.10. And then this trigger, you got to make sure your trigger is the right direction. So down here in the verbiage, it says, the, uh, wait until this condition is satisfied. The security is less than or equal to 79.10. Just make sure you've got your trigger the right way because it could be, a greater than or equal to, or just greater than or equal to, or you could put it there uh, as a trail stop, okay? So that's some of the conditions you can put on an, on an option. Uh, you can also do this with spreads. You can do it to pick a target and a stop, say on that option. This was on the actual entry of the option, but just know these principles, you're gonna be able to use them in your different configurations of different trades. If you, for example, also wanted a timestamp on this, for example, maybe you wanted this order to go in, but you wanted it to be delayed, okay? Up here, you can play with some time frames here. So let's suppose you don't want this order to go off. I uh, want you to notice I'm in my mountain time zone. It's 1031 right now. And last time, uh, I think we talked about you can set your own time zone up here. I am in the upper left-hand corner right there, okay, in that block. And you can choose if you want your own time zone or if you want, come on, mouse, there we go. What is the problem? I know what the problem is. I can't do it while I'm setting up an order. Just know you can go and change your time up there or I, I indicated. But let's suppose you don't want your order to go in until 11 o'clock. Or better yet, what if you want it to go in half an hour before the market closes, okay? One thing you need to know is this is military time, okay? So military time, we want it to go in at 1.30 my time. Uh, we would make sure to put it in military time, all right? Uh, just be aware of that. Same thing, maybe if you don't get filled today, you want it to, to cancel. You could do that. Uh, you could do that just by leaving it a day order. If you wanted to cancel it at a specific time, you could. Okay, so a lot of control in there if you want. I'm going to hit save. And, and actually, I'm going to put this, I probably put this as a good till cancel. Uh, we're going to delay when the order goes out. And you, maybe you still would like to get filled based on this condition, then just do it GTC. And then you're going to see here's your order. It just needs that little gear to be clicked to see all the conditions that are with it. Now I am going to submit this one. Okay. And in your corner up here in the upper left, I want you to pay attention because it's going to notify us that the order hopefully has been filled. It should be, eh, actually, it's not, it might not get filled because I said we want the price to go to 79.10, actually went to 79.28. But go ahead, I'm gonna hit confirm and send, review it, make sure it's what you want. 
Uh, you'll see all these little conditions up here. We did that. We're doing the default of 10. I'm going to hit submit. And then we will see it up here in our working orders. OK, that's where it goes until the condition is triggered. All right, let's do a couple of other trades and then I'm going to go back and see what kind of questions you still have. What if uh, you want to do a credit spread? Uh, it's been more bearish, so you would either maybe a debit spread, you might choose something like an 80-75 long put vertical, as where you're going to put your mouse is anywhere on this line. You could even be over here in your open interest, okay? You would do a right mouse click, and then you'd say buy custom, or um, actually, I take that back. <laughs> buy, because it's a long vertical, just go up to the buy, and then it balloons out all these different types of trades. Okay, so I'm going to choose vertical, and it knows to go grab the next strike price in sequence, which is 75. So you're going to start kind of with your, your lead leg, so to speak, the one that's kind of your driver on the trade, and just know it'll come out and pick up this. Can you change it? Sure, if you wanted this $10, wide you could come down here click on the 75 come up here change it to 70 okay the value of the spread is going to be listed here uh, the default again is 10 contracts that may or may not be appropriate for your particular scenario let's take it down to three and that's how you might just put together just a basic debit spread what if you wanted to do a credit spread you're just going to do the same thing, but we're going to go over to the call side here. So let's maybe go out here to the, let's go to the 85. Let's do an 8590 short call vertical. Again, right mouse click, buy, and then just choose vertical. Okay. Oh, I didn't want to do, I wanted to sell. Sorry. I sell, get on the right button, Connie, sell vertical. Great. Then it's a credit spread. You see that pink background that's going to alert you to it. Same things apply here anytime you're doing an order. We could come in here and build an, a target and a stop loss on this. So, for example, uh, let's go down here. This is a box I haven't really pointed out to you yet. It is called the advanced order field. It tells what kind of order you're doing here. Okay. And so here, we're default is single. It's just going to be a single spread to go through. But I could put on here a first trigger sequential, which means after I have this order in, then tell me what to do next. You could put it as a stop or as a target. I'm gonna actually change it and I'm gonna say a first triggers one cancels other. So this is gonna be our initial credit spread. And then I'm gonna create two opposite spreads. Okay, so I'm gonna do a create opposite order, create opposite order again. And then these two orders, the, the two green orders, there's still a vertical, but we would put conditions that we might want to get out on. So for example, uh, suppose on this, this is a credit spread, say you get a majority of it and you just want to buy, have the system buy it back when you get a good chunk of it. We may say, okay, go buy it back when it gets to 35 cents. Okay. And you'd make it good till cancel. We're going to make both of those good till cancel. And then you might use this one as a stop. Now you could reverse the order if you wanted to, but maybe here, if this value of that credit spread gets up to say um, 225, you don't want to take a, a big loss on it. And so you maybe put in a stop here. You'd put this in, but we're going to change this to a stop order. All right. That the value of the spread, if it gets up to 225, which is considerably bigger than what we're bringing in here on the 142, you can do that. Okay. So that's how you kind of combine spreads and first triggers OCO this order has to be filled first or neither of these will fill that's what that first triggers OCO means that very first order has to trigger first all right that may have brought up some questions to some of you let me jump over and let me look and see what questions that you have let me scroll down here a little bit can you talk about exporting transactions so that we can analyze it later on Excel? Uh, if you come over here to um, monitor an account statement, this is where you're going to find your historical information. 
Um, uh, let me go back 30 days here, okay? And we could see whatever the transactions were, uh, which we don't have a lot of transactions in here. Um, to export it, I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since I worked with exporting. At any, uh, maybe it's on, uh, maybe it's on this window. Export to file. Okay, let me highlight that menu for you. It's up here, upper right hand corner. Whatever you have set up here, whether it's all the ticker symbols were just for a particular trade, right? We could put in Google there and it would just show us the Google trades. Uh, what it'll do, then you can click on it, hit export to file, and then give it a good name. You can go find it. Okay. Other question. Uh, will you be doing this webcast every week? And will we be covering how to set up charts at some points? Yes, we will. Uh, I'm doing these getting started with thinkorswims every Wednesday at this time for several weeks, okay? Uh, I'm also doing one on Friday that is exploring thinkorswim. It's a little bit more advanced for those that maybe have a little bit of exposure to thinkorswim but are ready to get into some, maybe some deeper information that we might not handle in just the initial getting started or beginning thinkorswim. Uh, is there a way you can email a question? Uh, no, unfortunately, we're registered and licensed, and therefore we we cannot uh, do emails with people. However, there are helps for you. Let me show you a couple of the helps that will be used for. And I think there may actually also be a survey out there. And we're starting to do some surveys. Just kind of get your feedback for, uh, you know, how this class went for you. And so it's just very specific to this session. Uh, if you don't mind, fill that out for us. We always appreciate it. They've made it pretty small and pretty easy, which I'm into easy surveys, not long extended ones, okay? But let me show you some resources here. Under education, I'm just gonna select on that. Uh, you can see a lot of resources here for Thinkorswim. One, well, there might be three here that you might be interested in right now. Maybe do the overview on Thinkorswim. I come over here, you get more ideas for stop orders and more ideas for watch lists, okay, that we haven't really got into. Uh, the question about the charts, we're gonna spend an entire session on the charts. I'm gonna select over here on Learning Center as well. Uh, and I'm gonna scroll up to the top while I was on Learning Center. And if you wanted to research something, for example, maybe you didn't know what a market order was or whatever, or what, how to find where you could do a market order. Uh, let's go market order. Oops, got to spell it right though. Whatever it is that you're interested in, go look it up. Okay, you can type it in there. It'll bring up all sorts of things that might be related to what you typed in there. You can even get very specific so that it's very long, so maybe it'll narrow down your field here as well. All right. Uh, let me uh, check here real quickly. Uh, call vertical spreads with triggers. Is that what you showed us just now or called? The ones that I showed you right now was a first triggers OCO, which stands for one cancels other. And it brought it up in a separate order type, right? I had come over here. Uh, actually, it was this strike. Let's do sell vertical. And then I added to it because initially, it was just a single order. I changed it to a first triggers, one cancels other, and then I built it. And along with building, you know, just down here, you can also use the gears. I'm just gonna show you a really complicated one, but we're out of time. But you can also use the gear to put in other conditions. What other condition might that be? Uh, what if you wanted to exit the spread when the price of the stock got to a certain point? Yeah, that could be something you could configure in here. You know, maybe you wanted to get out uh, if the price of the stock dropped to, I'm just gonna go like $71, okay? We're basing the, the exit condition on the actual price of the stock, not on the price of the option. So you can do it both ways. All right, now I'm gonna encourage you to paper trade, all right? Uh, somebody said, can, uh, can you go between TOS and SSE? Uh, what is recommended for trading options? Uh, again, 
I would say for everything, not just options, okay, for your trading in general, you'll want to just get acquainted with it. So go to the paper money, should do that at the top of how to get into paper money. Uh, it looks like this, come down at the bottom, choose paper money. And it's brown, it says paper money all over the place so that you know you're in paper and not in your live account, okay? And then what you'll want to do is just practice doing the types of trades you do. I wouldn't enable it to trade until you've had some time to spend with it on the Thinkorswim platform, okay? Now I need to just give you a summary of what we talked about, the different tools. The big thing for you is practice. OK, I remember when I saw Thinkorswim for the first time, I was like, oh, my gosh, this does more than anything I've ever traded on before. Any other platform I'd ever seen. And, and we know there's a learning curve to it, but you're going to love it once you just kind of get used to using it and seeing the different things and the flexibility that it can give to you. All right. Now, coming up next, we're going to have uh, Lee Bull is going to be charting the markets with uh, one of my fellow coaches, Ken Rose. That's going to start at the top of the hour. And again, the survey's out there. I see it there now. Just if you mind helping us out, filling out that short survey. We always appreciate your feedback. Uh, that'll help us make the sessions for you better. Uh, so that's why we want to do it. So just as a reminder, we talked about today is for educational and informational purposes only, not a recommendation of any security strategy or account type. Uh, past performance is no guarantee of future results or success. All right. I will see you Friday, the same time if you choose to come to my Exploring Thinkorswim. Again, it's a little more intermediate level. I'll be back here next week as well, and we'll continue with getting started with Thinkorswim. I'll see you then.